Amen. It has been awesome already. And I'm just expecting more from God. Amen. And so uh, once again this morning we are so thrilled to have Dr. Jerry Dodson and, and uh, let's let's give him a Glade Spring welcome one more time. Good morning. Good morning. You guys have been awesome. You know, I have really enjoyed being with you. Uh, if Danny wasn't such a friend, I'd see if I could have him moved. <laughs> but, but, you know, friendship goes deep, and you have to, you have to honor that. But I'd like to take a moment this morning to thank you for your hospitality. You, you guys have just been awesome. Thank you for coming out to these services. And uh, I like uh, a special thanks to your pastor and his wife. Uh, just absolutely awesome. We have been treated so fine. Uh, uh, you, you almost don't want to go back home. And that says a whole lot. Thank you. It's been good to be with Daisy and William and the family. Uh, <laughs> Her family and my family uh, were almost neighbors. You know, we come from the same general area. And uh, we don't talk about it too much, but uh, <laughs> but we came from the mountains back there, and it's um, just an awesome, just an, an awful lot of <coughs> wonderful people back there in the mountains. And, and uh, certainly we do appreciate our upbringing. Uh, a lot of closeness. You meet someone from the mountains, you're related. You know, you may have to go back a little ways to find one, but you're related. She was speaking the other day of, of one of my aunts, Cora Hibbets. Cora Hibbets was uh, a great impression on me when I was a teenager and started preaching. And uh, she truly blessed me. Truly blessed me. So we have a, we have a lot of the same roots. And, and getting to know Michelle and, and Don's family, they see meeting the kids. Uh, you know, you guys are just, you're really blessed. You're really blessed. Now let me tell you something. There is a problem brewing in the church. Not speaking of your church specifically, but in the church at large. Uh, there's becoming a great shortage of pastors. And uh, to give you an idea, one school used to, uh, you know, one organization used to graduate 40,000 pastors a year, and now it's down to under 2,000. Now think about that. <coughs> the, the people are not going into the ministry like they used to, and uh, I was praying the other day, and I was saying, Lord, this would be an absolutely awesome place to train young ministers and send them out. I don't know if the Lord's ever given me a vision like that or not, but I just kind of sensed that while I was praying here. And uh, this church could affect the world with what you have, with the love that you have. And uh, I want you to know that I greatly do appreciate you, and I, I thank you. Uh, I, I appreciate Kevin being with me. Uh, you might wonder why that Kevin travels with me. By the end of the service today, you'll know more about why Kevin travels with me. Uh, the videos and things like that he does is just a hobby. It's just something he likes to do. And um, uh, we have another gentleman who travels with us sometimes that does videos. And, but uh, but I, I'm glad to have Brother Kevin. I used to say that one day I'll stand before the Lord. And as he mentions the things that I've accomplished, the people that I've won to the Lord, or anything that I may have ever been able to accomplish, that I would look over my shoulder and Brother Kevin would be standing there. And then I, as, as I gave that thought, I thought probably it would be Kevin there getting the, re the rewards, and I will be standing behind him. And you'll know more about that in a minute, too. Uh, 
the Lord brought us together some 25 years ago. Uh, we just clicked, and uh, uh, I'm grateful to the Lord that we are able to work together. We're a team. We both know our place. We know sometimes he calls me and he says, this is what the Lord is saying to me, and I'm thinking, that's the message I was looking for. That's what I was looking for. And uh, uh, I hope that in some way we have encouraged you. I hope that in some way your life has been changed, that you'll never be the same. I hope that you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is more interested in a relationship with you and just loving you than he is anything you could ever do, anything you could ever give. Just like your children and your grandchildren. And they come in and they crawl up on your lap and they sit there and you just enjoy them. This is the way God is with me. I know it's not what you've been taught. You know, we came through a lot of those things over the years. And, uh, uh, God is love. He really is. Um, I thank you for being a part of our ministry. And I want to give you some requests today to pray for us. We're in need of a 15-passenger bus. Uh, this is for a ministry that we work with. Uh, and we're in need for a scooter. And I'm not asking somebody to buy me a bus or a scooter. But if you know of somebody that has a 15-passenger bus or a small scooter, uh, if you would let me know, we, we might be interested in, in working something out about that. And uh, I travel a lot, so if there's anything that you need, you know, if you let me know, I can uh, if I run across it, I'll let you know. Okay? Uh, it is 11.39. You probably get out at 12 o'clock. If you'll set your clocks, uh, everybody got a phone today. Set your clock for 12.01, and I will have gone over, and uh, you'll all be happy, and I'll... <laughs> Who's the meanest person in here? <laughs> Who, which one? You, okay. And you, you tell me, you tell me when to quit at 12 o'clock, and... <laughs> I'd like you to turn your Bibles to the book of Proverbs. <coughs> the book of Proverbs, chapter 29. Verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keeps the law, happy is he. As I came into your church this morning, I think I was the last one that came in, and I parked in such a way that nobody can leave until I do. <laughs> you have a parking problem. Now, I work with churches, and people call me and say, you know, our churches are growing. What's, what's, what could the problem be? What could this be? What do we need to do? And I tell you, it's not what you need to do. It's something that's already in your church, something already that you have a parking problem. Now, people say, well, that's a good problem. Well, it's better than not having anybody in your parking lot. But it's a problem, and a problem is a problem. And uh, I'd like to address the elders of this church. You need to seriously think about doing something about it. I don't know what your options are. But, you know, if I was coming here for the first time, I first pulled around to the side, and I, there's no place on the side. And I had to back out. If any of you find any scratches on your car. <laughs> I had to back out and, and, and park just barely off the road over here on this side. Uh, now, why, why do you want to do something about it? Because you're limiting yourself to how many people you reach. <laughs> You limit yourself to how many people you can reach. So, vision. Vision is the most powerful thing that you can possibly have. Vision comes from God. It's not my ideal. It's not your ideal. When God begins to birth in us what he has planned for your church, and then your people begin to, to come together in unity on that. Did you know that the Bible says when two people agree together, it's like the anointing of the Holy Spirit? Right? 
the psalm says, Oh, how good and how pleasant when brethren come together in unity. It's like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard had run down to the skirt of his garment. Unity is a powerful thing. And churches today are having to pray, God, give us unity. Tim, McDonald's today, right? 